what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Open up any songs, any testimonies. Sister Stephanie, praise the Lord. I just want to say thank God for Jesus and um, his protection, um, his healing, his deliverance, his mercy, yes. his grace, and all his goodness. Mm -hmm. This was our first week of school, and um, I was a little bit skeptical about even wanting to go back because they were just all over the place in the meetings prior to and wanting and expecting so much and they still do but that's okay the word that the Lord gave me was optimistic and I went around the school and told everybody the word so <laughs> so um, we're all going to be optimistic this year about um, having a wonderful and a good school year. Um, and I'm just grateful and thankful that you can give him your smallest concern, your biggest concern, worry, um, and he hears you and he cares. Yes, he Amen. Amen. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord, He has kept me. Good to me. 
just another day that the Lord has been good to me. Just another day that the Lord has been merciful to me, oh yeah, just another picture they showed. It looked just like Maui. It was all burnt up, all gray, all over. But it was one building standing in the middle of all that. And it was a church. A testimony of God that he is the greatest power. And I was watching TV this week. It was Saturday. And I was looking at the television. You know, they, they showed Maui and all the burnout stuff from the day it happened to this day. All of it being burned up and burned out. But this Saturday, they showed a picture of a church standing in the middle of all that destruction. Testimony. His power. And what he can do. I saw it one time. One time. No, they're going through stuff in Maui. I understand all that. 
But boy, it sure would be nice if they showed the people that there is a God and he can protect what he wants to protect at one church. One time, I've had to see Maui for the weeks that it's, I've seen it almost a thousand times. One time, and I haven't seen it yet again. But that's how the enemy is. The enemy wants to block out everything God's doing. He wants to shut his children up. He wants to, God to be completely through Je Jesus and what Jesus is doing, completely wiped off from man's heart and man's mind and man's mouth. Because once you lift him up and praise him, he's going to show himself strong in the power that only he, can, only he can bring forth. I was listening to all the stuff's going on in the world. California. This is just last week. Hillary. You know, floods everywhere. Same day, they have an earthquake. The same day. A few miles up the road in the state of Washington, fires burning. They got all kinds of stuff going on. But very few people are really paying attention to it. Unless it hits them, of course. You got to pay attention then. But most people aren't. But it's a whole lot of things going on. A whole lot of problems going on. But God is still showing himself strong. God is still delivering. God is still helping. God is still doing what nobody else can do in all of our lives. And I just wanted to thank God for showing himself. For those that, even though the enemy is making it hard as possible, people to even see the miracles that he's doing. Not only just miracles in people's lives, miracles in the world. You know, like I was thinking about that lady that had that snake on her arm. And the snake was trying to bite her eye. She had glasses on and couldn't get to her eye. And she was hollering for her husband. He was too far away. She couldn't hear. And a hawk comes out the sky. But see, the Lord made it testify. She had to say, I called on Jesus. I hollered Jesus. And you know what? That bird came out the sky. Got that snake. He, he blessed her, blessed the bird too. Got rid of the serpent. But you know, our, our, our Lord is doing great things all the time. I was thanking him. I just want everybody to thank everybody for the prayers. Brother Russell is back in rehab. Amen. Amen. The Lord answered prayer. He, he was really sick there. Uh, you know, he had got hit with some infections and everything. And the Lord has, has brought him back to rehab, and he's doing fine. I just got the message from Arlene this, this, after, this morning. And I thank God. And I just want to thank God for what he's done for me the last seven days. Because you know, we had the baptism. I had to do a whole lot of running around. And you know what? We all at that age when we got some problems in this body we can't around. And I got mine. But I'm glad I got a throne of grace I can give all my problems to. So they don't worry me. And thank God they ain't having much effect. But I do get pain once in a while. I tell you. Uh, and you know, I was kind of tired and everything from running around because you had to get the pool ready, get everything, like the brothers came in, were, were a great blessing, help set everything up and everything. And um, uh, I guess it was, you know, after it was all over Sunday night, I really, um, I think it was Sunday night, I really, um, you know, I got these abscesses that pop up every once in a while. And uh, what had happened was, on Monday, I had to go to get an exam because, you know, I told them about that, you know, the things that would bother me and everything. And finally got, uh, I think I already gave this testimony, that they got the doctor to look at it and everything, and they wanted me to come in and give, it, give me an MRI. The only place they could give me an MRI on Monday was in Kenneth Square. From my, where I live, it, it's 55 miles one way, and it took me an hour and a half to get there. And the abscesses are in a very uncomfortable place that I have to sit on. And when I sit long, it's very, very 
painful. You know, when I'm standing, it's not a problem. Or if I sleep on my stomach, but when I sit, especially for a long time, and then you know the bumps and riding and everything and all that. But they just gave me the MRI. Everything turned out fine. They gave everything. But that night, boy, I really was, I was in pain, and I was, I, I just, just, just prayed, said, Lord, I. I'm at the point now where I can't take too much more. I'm going to have to go up to Abington because I know I can get it drained. All I got to do is go to Abington and they'll, they'll numb me and they'll drain it, you know, and, and then I'll be fine. But I said, I really don't want to do that because they're getting ready to do surgery on me Thursday. So I got in my little tub of, uh, of Epsom, Epsom salt and, and alcohol, which has helped a lot. And I laid there for, I guess, about a good 45 minutes. And I prayed. And I laid hands back there. I said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I really need you to help me. I laid there for another 30, 30 minutes. I got up, and the abscesses drained. Thank you. It just, the blood just went right down my leg. I, I, I was right. I said, thank you, Jesus. I almost shouted inside the tub, but I said, no, don't do that because you might, you ain't got your back. But boy, I just praised God and I felt good and everything was fine. And Thursday, uh, me and my son, my son Michael took me there because, you know, Bree works at night and I didn't want to mess with her day because, you know, I don't know, you know, exactly when she works and everything. And then when she does work, she works at night and that throws her all off. And they want to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning, which I don't mind. I don't mind getting up. That doesn't bother me. And, uh, we, you know, maybe we both got up about 6 o'clock and got ourselves together and got down there at 8 o'clock. And, uh, you know, they got a whole lot of people that they're working on and everything like that. But they, uh, you know, they, you know uh, they got a brand new building. They got all this new stuff. Man, I was kind of, I said, wow, this is. Okay, you know, and they did whatever they had to do, put me to sleep. I ain't even know nothing about it. They put me to sleep, and everything. You know, they talked to me about it, and uh, you know, they went on and did whatever they did. Did, and I woke up and I was feeling fine. And they, you know, told me that they uh, cleaned everything out and everything. It looks well. And, Praise the Lord, and I just thank God for Jesus, that he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he help you in whatever situation you're in, he'll help, because I pray and ask him to guide him, guide those folks that they, you know, help me, help this flesh continue on as long as Jesus wanted me to, and he did, and I just want to thank God for being a present help in time of need, being a healer, and a helper in everything that we need, and everything that we look, look for him to do, and uh, I'm just grateful, I'm just grateful, so I just want to praise and thank him for, you know, bringing me through the last, last week, and just, just being a keeper, not only being a keeper, being a blesser, because he can bless his people, that we can get his blessings in our lives, healings, deliverances, and all the help that any of us needed in time, I'm just, just so grateful and so thankful. He can heal, and he still does that for his people. So I just would like to just have a word of prayer before we go into the message tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank and praise you, Lord, for everything that you've done for each and every one of us, Lord. Most of all, coming into our lives, letting us know that you are the Savior, and that you are the one that God sent to reconcile man back to God. Lord, we ask that you might strengthen us in each and every way that you might put down everything that in anything that is not like you and bring forth your spirit for your glory, that your word might go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to do and not come back to you void, but accomplish that which you sent it to do, Lord, to increase our faith, to bring us into the kingdom, give us joy, peace, where there is no joy and peace, and give us most of all love that only you possess, that unconditional love that's able to love no matter what's going on around us or not what's going on even, uh, you know, to us. Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you for calling us and making us your children, for choosing us, Lord. And we ask that you might give us that, that love, that peace, that joy that only you possess, Lord, and that you might anoint us 
your spirit and strengthen us for your glory. Those that might be in sorrow or sadness or, or just being afflicted by the enemy, Lord, we ask that this word that you've told us and that you've promised us might heal them Lord, and strengthen them, Lord. And let them know that they do have a Savior that can bring them through whatever they're going through and give them that love, peace, and joy that only you possess, Lord. And we bind up the enemy, Lord, and anything that's not like you, Lord, and we cast it down in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everything that you've done. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. 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 And the title for this message tonight is Jesus is coming soon. And he's looking for a bride. He's coming soon. And he's looking for a bride. And that bride will be his church, the body of Christ. I want to go to Luke. 21st chapter. I just want to read the 27th verse. And it says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that's just what he's going to come with. And that's just what he has. Let's go to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and I want to start at the first verse. And it says, Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to come to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Everybody too busy to hear or come to the king's way. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. He even got spiteful and nasty and angry with the servants that came to invite him to the wedding. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be to the marriage. So those servants went out in the highways and gathered together all many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And you know, the garment that God is clothing us with, with, is his righteousness. He's calling us what he wants us to be, righteous. Back in those days, the people were so poor until they didn't have their RSVP or their invitation to a king's uh, wedding feast would be a set of clothes for them to wear. That's what he gave them to let them know that they were invited to the wedding. Just like Jesus is putting on us his righteousness to change us and make us the way he wants us to be. He, they in those days would, the servants would give them a set of clothes that they should wear at that wedding feast. Wow, he is mad, ain't he? My goodness. I tell you now, this is something. He don't he, he really trying. He really, he really cutting up. Boy, <laughs> boy, he's 
fighting, but guess what? He done lost already. He done lost already. It's deep. Yeah, I can hear you. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Okay, we got it. We got it now. Praise the Lord. Let's let let's let it alone. It seems like we got it now, and and we just gonna keep on getting it until it falls apart again. Then we are gonna get it some more. Amen. That's how you do it. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask to think. According according to the power that works in. Oh, it's got an update. Praise God. We're learning every day. Thank God. So where was that? Praise uh, God. Twelve. Twelve. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou hither and not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away. And cast them in out of darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. And we're chosen and called to trust in, in Him and let Him do the work that only He can do in our lives. Let's go to Matthew six thirty three, and it's just one verse I want to read. One verse that we should let sink deep down in our souls. And let that be the guiding light of what we are seeking after. And it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And what that means is what you think and what you call right ain't right. What God says in his word is right. That's his righteousness. What he said. And what we have to trust and believe in that. So he can manifest those things in our lives. Because he's able to do that. You know, God said it. I believe it. And he will manifest it. And let's go to Luke 21. Luke the 21st chapter. That's Luke, the 21st chapter, and I want to start at the fifth verse, and it says, and, and as some spake of the temple and how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, as, these, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And the word of Jesus always comes to pass. But thank God for his mercy that everything hasn't come to pass yet. Because when it does, all of this mess is going to be over with. And not one stone was left on the other because the, the, the roof of that building was solid gold. And it, the gold, because of the fire, the gold seeped between the cracks. And all the Roman soldiers tore down every stone and scraped off the gold. 
because they could get they could get to that was their spoil mm -hmm. for you know defeating the Jewish nation. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when these when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation. And we, we're seeing all that now, nation fighting nation, nationalities hating each other. And kingdom against kingdom, that's always been. And the great earth and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Earth, earthquakes where there usually is not earthquakes. That's what a diverse place is, different places, and famines and pestilence, meaning not only just like grasshoppers and locusts and things like that, but also the microbes like the COVID and, and, and diseases and things like that. That's, that is the pestilence that they're talking about. And fearful sights and great signs there be from heaven, all these different uh, asteroids and these meteorites hitting the earth and things like that and going by and almost hitting us. But before all these things, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and the prisons being brought forth before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And, shall turn, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not, met, not to meditate before what ye shall answer for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents, by brethren, by kinsfolks, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. All that was mainly, and it's still going on in the world, but we're blessed because it hasn't got that bad for us in America where they're persecuting us in that manner. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience you possess your souls. And when you shall see, when ye, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation is thereof is nigh. And we done seen Jerusalem encompassed with armies quite a few times. The War of 67, the War of 72, the fighting in 48, all those things were, were encompassing Jerusalem, encompassing the area that God wanted to give the people, of the nation of Israel. And when you shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, let them which are in the midst of the part out, and let not them that are in the countries thereof therein too. For these will be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Everything that he wrote in this Bible, this book, this holy book is being fulfilled. It's the only book that is a prophecy that tells exactly what God is going to do through Jesus Christ and it's coming to pass in every generation the different parts, the signs that he wants his people to know. Just like we are the last generation, according to this Bible. But woe unto them that are with child and them which give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, wrath upon us people, this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, they shall be led away captive to all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be Fulfilled. We are right now in the times of the Gentiles. Ever since Jerusalem was destroyed by Titus Vespasius in uh, 67 B, uh, a, uh, AD until now is where it is the times of the Gentiles. Only two types of people to God in the world. 
Everybody else got their national. I'm black and I'm proud and that's all right. And I'm Italian and I'm, I'm European. I'm white and I'm right. And everybody and the Asians got theirs and everybody got got their identification. But God see two types of people. Either you a Jew, Jewish that knows God and has been brought up under the oracles of God, or you're a Gentile that does not know God. We're being made spiritual Jews. We're being made Jews in our hearts because we are following after the one that was born of that nation. And God chose that nation to bring him through and to make him what he is, King of kings and Lord of lords. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distresses of nations. And boy, aren't you seeing a whole lot of distresses of nations. You look at the news and you got earthquakes going on, thousands of people die, tsunamis and, and, and floods and, and rainstorms and all kinds of stuff going on with perplexity. And people are getting perplexed. Now COVID then came through the whole world. And, and, and guess what? It ain't going nowhere. It's still here. And guess what? It's going to come back as soon as the weather changes. It's going to be, uh, it's going to come back. It's going to be strong. But they say it's getting strong all the time. The sea and the waves roaring. Even the sea. Tell me the sea is 90 degrees now. Just in a lot of different places. That's too hot for the sea. For the coral to grow. For, for the, the fishes to survive. And stuff like that. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Because they don't know what's going on. They pick up the Bible and read it. They see what's going on. They tell you right here. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. And lift your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them in a parable. Behold the fig tree. Whenever God talks about the fig tree, he's talking about the nation of Israel. That's his fig tree. That he has planted. And he has watered. And he has brought forth his word through those people. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When, when they now shoot forth, ye see and ye know of your own self that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till it all be fulfilled. Isaiah 66 says, shall a nation be born in a day? Never in the history of mankind has a nation been destroyed, its language taken away, its people taken away. And they came back and took over their land. And it was recorded. The only place it was recorded is inside of this Bible. And God said that he would bring the nation of Israel back. Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 38, talks about dry bones. And it tells you about those bones. He told the prophet to prophesy about those bones. And he prophesied. He said, call on the wind. God sent the wind. And a mighty army came out of those bones. That was the army of Israel. That is the people. All of us that accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior are a part of that. God has made us a part. Jew and Gentile, he has made. That he tore down the, 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 the petition between us and brought us into a relationship with him. And Isaiah 66 says that a nation shall be born in a day. Israel is created in 131 seconds. In Hoboken, New Jersey, the League of Nations voted them into existence. 
somebody bought like a hundred, used about a hundred thousand dollars and bought some land. The Arabs said, oh, we're gonna let them take the land, we're gonna let them have the land. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill them all after we get the money. Guess what? They still can't kill them. Still can't stop them. You know why? But God said it would be. Not because there's anything special about them, them people as a flesh. But because God said that his, that that's what he wrote in his Bible. And that would come to pass. And it happened in 1948, which is our gener my generation and a bunch of us older ones now. Because the generation is about 25 years. But we don't know how long it's going to last because I don't know what a generation is with God. When, when Noah had his time, in Noah's time, Noah's granddad was named Methuselah. He lived to be the oldest man in the history of mankind because God is so merciful. And I don't know how merciful he's going to be, but I do know man is sure trying to wreck himself because he's really tearing up. Them spirits has got him going, doing all kinds of stuff. Well, that's saying that this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We're still reading the words that Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago. I don't know of anybody else that even thinking about anybody else that's passed away. I ain't reading nothing from nobody else that's passed away. But Jesus, because God raised him up again. Amen. And he is alive yes. and very That's well right. and know what living yeah. in each and every one of us. Yeah. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. That's just, you know, having, thinking you're having a whole bunch of fun in the flesh when ain't nothing but death and destruction in the flesh. And drunkenness and the cares of this life be so concerned about what's going on out here because I got news for you ain't nothing you can do can't change nothing all you can do is take it to the throne of grace mm -hmm. and ask God to have mercy mm -hmm. and so that day come upon you unawares for as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus got an escape route for the believer. Mm -hmm. Jesus got a kingdom for the believer. And it's full of love, peace, and joy. And it's not bogged down by all this craziness that's going on in the world. Because he knows exactly what's going to happen. And he's got the power to bring us through a way that we can have what he promised that we would have. In that time, they, and in that in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount which is called Mount of Olives, and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple, for to hear him. And guess what? I'm still coming to hear him. I can't get enough of him. I thank God for Jesus, because he is so encouraging, such a blessing. Let's go to Matthew, 25th chapter. I think most of us are kind of familiar with that. Matthew, the 25th chapter, first verse. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise <laughs> took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Back there, then again, it was a different culture. See, our culture puts all the emphasis on the bride. It's her day. She's the one that everybody acknowledges. And the one that gets all, really, she gets all prettied up. And she comes down. And everybody's, she gets all recognition. Back in the, that day, it's the bride, it's the groom, it's the bridesman. The groom got all the glory. And if you weren't ready, when the groom came, he had the power 
to disannul that engagement. In other words, if he wasn't ready, he turned around and said, I ain't marrying you. Because it was all about him. And I got news for you. This and this marriage that we all got with Jesus, all about him. He got to get us all ready. And we got to stay ready. Because I don't want to miss it. I want him to get me the way I, I got to be acceptable to him. While the bride tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose, vir virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. You know, they ran out of what they needed to have. But that wasn't the only problem. Now they left where they was. But the wise answer said, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But you go rather than them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward also came the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Be ye ready, be prayed for, be filled and getting refilled with his Holy Ghost. Because every time we get together, every time we talk on the phone, every time you listen to one of those videos, or every time you open up the Bible, you are getting filled with the oil that you need to be prepared to meet the one that's coming to get us through all of this stuff. Let's go to Ephesians, fifth chapter. Ephesians, fifth chapter. <coughs> I want to go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and I want to go to the 26th verse. And what is he coming for? And what is he going to do? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. We're all getting a bath right now because we're listening to his word and he's watching us, washing us and cleansing us and renewing us and strengthening us in his word. That he might present it to himself, a glory church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, if I was thinking I could do this myself, I would say it's impossible. But he is going to do it because he is going to present us as his bride. Let's go to Revelations 19. Revelations 19th chapter. Revelations 19th chapter. And I want to start at the sixth verse. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters. And as the voice mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Time to get ready. Get right, church. Let's go. 